Good morning, Scout. Okay, well, good morning from South Carolina. We've officially made it into the southern states. If you didn't know, we are driving our camper van from the UK all the way down to Argentina. We're currently on the east coast of the states heading south. This is our first time in South Carolina. We parked up at this beautiful trailhead car park. There's also a canoe launch. There's a few people turned up this morning with their canoes. We're driven inland a little to find Congaree National Park the largest expanse of old growth bottomland hardwood forest in the United States. If like me you're wondering exactly what that means, it's basically deep impenetrable swampy forest that sits on an ancient floodplain. We'd made it to the swamps of the deep south. Okay, we've not had this out for probably what, nine months? I think I'll uh, invest in an electric pump. <laughs> And you can tell we've not had it out for ages because our paddles broke. So it's still usable, but the extension bit, which goes up here, will not stay in. Something's come off inside. So yes, got half a paddle. There we go. See you later. Watch out for alligators. Here we are, just cruising down the river. How does it feel? Really nice, You're scared of alligators? So apparently there are alligators in Congaree National Park, but they're quite rare and they tend to hang around the south of the park near the river. We're kind of really on the northern boundaries of it. So yeah, I'm hoping that our wildlife luck means that we don't see any. Come into dock. So it's starting to get a lot busier with kayakers now. You can see why this place is so popular. That creek was so beautiful, so peaceful. You could just like cruise along downstream with no effort whatsoever. I think you can actually go two miles downstream to another landing. But yeah, beautiful way to spend the morning. We're gonna head to the visitor center now and go and head deeper into Congaree National Park. In May and June, this national park gets absolutely packed because there is a huge firefly show here. Throughout May and June, like the fireflies put on this huge display and there's like tens of thousands of them all like flying and twinkling everywhere. In fact, it is so popular to come and see them that the national park have to issue like a lottery ticket system. But the rest of the year, as far as national parks go, this is a pretty quiet one. We have come onto the Boardwalk Trail, which is a two and a half mile trail that takes you through some of the most beautiful parts of the forest. Even though it isn't the longest trail in the park, it is meant to be one of the nicest. And it's free. It was free to enter the park, free to come in, and they give you a free self-guided tour. This, guys, is a lob lolly pine tree. And it's unusual to find <laughs> pines growing in wetland areas, however, the loblollies can tolerate living in wet conditions. Loblolly pines are the tallest tree in South Carolina, and this tree is over 150 feet tall and is a former state champion. Wow. That provided by a number 11 marker. This is Western Lake. About 2,000 years ago, the river slowly changed direction and meandered south which then left this massive lake, which is slowly filling in with clay and debris from like the trees and things. In the warmer months here, you'll find yellow turtles or yellow belly turtles and also snapper turtles. Any alligators? No alligators on, from, uh, from what I understand. It's a baby boar. What is it? It's a wild boar. It's a baby pig. There's a wild boar just down here. This boardwalk is high enough that we're not disturbing it and it almost doesn't realize that we're here. So it's like the perfect little wildlife viewing platform. And you know what? Because there isn't really meant to be much wildlife in this forest, it's the one time I didn't bring my zoom lens and what are the chances that the one time I don't bring it, we see a beautiful wild boar. That was awesome. I think Ben got some really good video on his phone. Apart from Scout, did start barking and scared the boar off at the end. 
the boar wasn't overly bothered, but was it? The boar didn't seem too bothered by Scout, no, he was just kind of, I think he knew that we were out of reach. <laughs> During the time of prohibition, where the consumption and the, and the um, production of alcohol was banned in the US, this is where people came to make moonshine because it's such a hard place to get to. And, oh, this here, what a funny what a coincidence. These, this here, this copper you can see in oh, the distance yeah. there, that's what they used to do to, to distill the corn and the water used from the floodplains. Ooh, mm. very interesting. The iron box you see in the distance is an old still used to make alcohol. I just told you that, didn't I? Oh, See? You didn't I, read it on that. I didn't read you it on here. It. I just wow. knew it. I just wow. knew it was coming up. I read it on the walk round. Ben's at it with a fun fact. Fun fact: South Carolina is known as the Palmetto State. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we are. See. Because there's so many of them. Yeah. As you can see, it is really, really thick, dense vegetation around here. And apparently just a few miles from here where two rivers meet, there was a maroon settlement. And a maroon settlement was where escaped slaves went to and formed their own like independent communities. The reason they chose this location was because it was near a river, which was good for food and supplies and travel. And also the dense vegetation made it very difficult for slave owners and slave catchers to catch the slaves who had escaped. So it was a bit of a, a bit of a haven for them in here. Just had a quick lunch. We have now left Congaree National Park and we're making our way down towards Charleston. We're gonna try and get in there tomorrow. It's supposedly one of the most beautiful cities in the whole of the United States. So it's about a couple of hours drive south and en route we desperately need to try and find some water. So this is Iovalander. We often use this to find somewhere to sleep and we also use it to try and find fresh water. We are up here. Um, Charleston is down here and just here this little orange symbol that's a dump station and it says it has a water pipe with no hose so hopefully there is fresh water there can't see very many fresh water places around here um, but yeah try this one first keep fingers crossed we're going past all of the cotton fields and there are so many in fact there's bales of cotton yeah you can see them all bailed up here all along there So, I'm guessing it's where these two massive RVs are. We just pulled into a petrol station called Flying J. They do have an RV dump station, it's $10. I just went inside to check that it was drinking water there and they said yes it's drinking water and if we're not dumping, which we don't need to do, um, then it's free and we haven't got to pay, which is a jackpot. Tastes good. <laughs> They're like old school taps, yeah. look at them. Okay. Right, vamos. We're just driving through a tunnel of oak trees and they are all covered in Spanish moss. You can tell that we're starting to get to Charleston and we are driving through this incredible tree-lined avenue that is stretching on for miles and miles. We're just surrounded by oak trees, there's Spanish moss hanging off them, and there's just huge, huge plantation houses along both sides of the road. Like a lot of them are set so far back, I can't actually see them, but they've got massive gates and multiple entrances, horses. Yeah. It's almost like an avenue of just stately homes. We have made it just outside Charleston and just before dark. We've pulled up into a Walmart car park, but this Walmart had particularly good reviews on Iovalander. People were saying how clean and quiet it was, how big it is, there's like palm trees everywhere. It looks like a little shopping mall rather than a Walmart, doesn't it? It's beautiful, it's, it's like, a, it's really like nice. a hotel resort. And we're just like tucked away into the corner. It's really nice. So I think that's what we'll do for the night, guys. And I am so hungry. Can we eat? Oh, hello. Oh, I'm so ready for this. We're having fajitas tonight. When we get to Mexico, we'll learn how to do this properly. 
show people how good I am at rapping. You got to hip, hop, the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip, hip, hop, and you don't stop the rocket to the bam, bam, boogie, set up, jump, the boogie, took the rhythm of the boogie to beat. Well done, there you go, you showed everyone. Oh, yeah. So I had a very quiet night here last night. This morning we're heading into Charleston. I think we can park at the visitor center. I think it's like $2 an hour. Um, we're a little bit later leaving than we wanted to though. So fingers crossed that we can get in and that there's space. Huh? There's two entrances. We need to make sure we go to the right one. Yeah, because one of them's got a height barrier. Yeah, one of them, one entrance goes on level car parking and the other one- Which we do which not we need. want. No, but the one we do need has like ground floor RV parking. Fingers crossed. Okay, so, so this definitely is, not this one. This is the one with the... Your destination is on the right. All oversized vehicles on Mary Street. So it was Mary Street. Yeah. Welcome. Please take your ticket. RV, this, where? Yeah, 100%. Of course. And just like that, we were in Charleston. Surviving hurricanes, fires, the Civil War and slavery, this is a picture-perfect city that embraces its layered past. It's been named the best city in the world by Condé Nast for a whopping nine years in a row. Think pastel colored mansions, rose colored sunsets, cobbled streets lined with palm trees and a salty sea breeze. And you might just get a sense of the magic in this little corner of the USA. So we're officially in Charleston. And it is beautiful. First impressions, it's incredibly green, blue skies, and one of the most beautiful cities like we've ever been to. Like usually it's just a district of a city that's like really nice and pretty. This entire place is painfully photogenic everywhere you look. Everything is beautiful, like the houses, everything's amazingly well kept. People are really friendly, loving Charleston. We've just come down to the waterfront to a place called the Battery. Here you can see some of the biggest mansions in Charleston, dating from like the pre-Civil War era. They're called like Antebellum. Yeah, they look absolutely incredible. So while we're just sat here admiring all of our future houses, there's um, an island just offshore behind us called Fort Sumner and I'm pretty sure that's where the first shots of the Civil War were fired. So like technically where the Civil War started. Right over there. Fact checker guys, because I don't know if that's real. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's I real. I don't know if that's real. I is it, it from is. a fort over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good. That's a good bit of history. Oh, I'm impressed with that. There's some sort of filming going on. There's a woman here against the pink wall and there's like a whole little set set up. This place is literally like just a massive movie set. I didn't really know what to expect, but it's just, I can't get across how beautiful this whole this whole city is. Everywhere. Crash, give us crash, give us crash. <laughs> oh. oh no 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 no! Don't dig holes. We're not excavators. Come on then. Okay, so we've been gone for about two hours now. It is getting so hot in Charleston. We've just brought the dogs back to put them in the van for an hour or so while we go and get some food. For anybody worried, the van is obviously under shelter here. We're not outside in direct sun. It is so nice and cool in there. We've got the fan on for them anyway. They are gonna be very comfortable and happy in there and probably just sleep for the next hour or so. We need to go and get some food and if we're with them, we'll probably have to sit outside and it's probably gonna be in the direct sun, so much safer and much better for them back in the van. And as you know, we would never ever leave them if there was like any problem or any thought of them. They're too precious. Not to being us. comfortable. You know, Literally. those dogs are absolutely spoiled children. Yeah. Normally they'll be like right at the door ready to go. Rivers crashed out in the back eating the bones. Scouts like biscuits. Scouts on the floor crashed out eating the biscuits and they just looked and just went. Yeah, they were like Please they've go. had enough. <laughs> Okay, so South Carolina is very, very famous for its food. It's southern comfort food. We tried cornbread for the first time with a honey maple butter, was it? Mm, yeah. Oh my God, it is amazing. It looks like this. And it's kind of like a cross between the softest bread, cake, kind of savory, kind of sweet. And it's warm in a cast iron skillet. Mm, it's so nice. And then he's gone for the classic fried chicken. Oh, fried chicken with sidewinder fries and it's immense. It is, oh, beautiful. Mm. And we're washing it all down with a sweet iced tea. So we've just come to Philadelphia Alley. Apparently it's one of the prettiest streets in Charleston. 
which is saying something. What I love about Charleston is it has like a real European feel to it that we've not really felt in the States so far. All these kind of li like little alleyways and cobbled streets, cafes everywhere, but like with the tropical sun and palm trees. It's such a unique place. Wow, this is someone's garden. One thing in Charleston, there's like gas lanterns everywhere. It's awesome, like above houses and on the streets, actual like proper lit gas lanterns. And just like you see in all the photos, there is Spanish moss everywhere. Well, the whole team is reunited. It is with heavy hearts now that we're leaving Charleston City. What an incredible place that was, okay? It was, it was awesome, loved it. <laughs> so I was just trying to pay attention to the getting out of this car park. There's a bit of a queue. Like even the car parks are beautiful. <laughs> We have just driven about 20 minutes outside of the city to come down to Folly Beach. It's probably Charleston's most famous beach and we thought it's such a beautiful evening for the perfect place to come watch the sunset. Wow. Look at all the starfish. Sand everywhere. This is the downside to beaches and living in a van is the amount of having dogs, the amount of sand. We basically take the beach home with us every day. Ben and I just people watching on the beach. There's a lot of people like beach combing, walking dogs, but there's two women right in front of us who are like on a starfish rescue mission. They're like picking up all the starfish that are on the beach and like they're putting them like in the little rock pool bit or out back out to sea, both of them. Right really like nice with handfuls of them. <laughs> it's sick on your head. The sun's gone down now. Does that mean we can go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was lovely to watch the sunset. No, it was lovely to I watch just can't, the sunset. We've been sat here for like an hour and twenty minutes, waiting for the sun to go down. And yeah, I've, but enjoying the beach and people watching. I just don't. I just don't have. I just don't have, have the um, patience. Patience for that, no. Back to Walmart. Okay. It's now a rain, but it's still really humid, isn't it? Yeah, it's very hot this morning. Good morning, guys. Are you looking forward to your trip this morning? Oh, how are we going to do this? <laughs> oh, go. Come on, River. Yep, this way. Okay, River. <laughs> Let's go. Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Come on. Scout's like, hell no. The reason that we stayed another night in the Walmart car park is because these guys have a vet appointment and we realised that the vet is only like a mile away from this car park, so that's why we stayed here last night. Scout is due as rabies, they both need some flea and tick treatment, and they just needed like, you know, the usual stuff from the vet. So we were meant to go when we we're back in Virginia, but the vets couldn't do the rabies job, so we're on our way there now. So vet trip they're vaccinated or health checked they got a plus on their physical exam which is great the only difference is for their flea and tick treatment we've got prescriptions which you have to go and pick up from a walmart or a costco like normally back in the uk and europe you just get it from the vets um but we didn't this time so they gave us these to get from walmart which we will get we also have heartworm treatment heartworm is a mosquito transmitted worm that is really bad <laughs> so it's really bad. We've also got a prescription for heartworm treatment. So heartworm is a mosquito transmitted worm. There's a problem down here, especially in the south and Florida where mosquitoes are an issue. So we've got proper heartworm treatment, like prevention treatment for them. 
and that is it we're all good to go and the travels continue so our first impressions of the deep south there is a magic here that's thick in the air like the scent of honeysuckle on a sticky summer's night and we loved every second of it please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed seeing south carolina through our eyes and subscribe if you're new to follow our journey to argentina we'll see you next week